brought to you in another edition of, of the Romania show. Hopefully we're technically working today like we're supposed to be. Uh, looks like we are. Um, just start off by uh, addressing the comment. If you look behind me, there's a Twitter message saying, would I consider it uh, for inclusion in the show? Uh, let me explain exactly what's going on. You can see, uh, I guess right here, that there are a number of ways to uh, contact me and contact the show and one of them is through Twitter and if you use the hashtag uh, while the show is running uh, it'll pop up automatically I literally have no control over that I'm seeing my hands are right here and I leave them unfiltered so that way people can add their two com add their two cents without any interference from me and if a thousand people start writing comments, it'll start flying up the screen. One person writes it, it'll sit on the screen the whole time. I am completely not in control of that. So, the answer to your question is, you can say whatever you like, whether it's critical or positive, and there's something I can do about it. So, yeah, kids, how's the weather today? Yeah, pretty good weather today, right? And in fact, the weather... Um, we had a little rain last night. It's a little bit cooler today, and the weather is so fantastic that uh, I just read a report that Mr. Nastase, the prisoner, the fake suicide guy, can uh, be transferred to jail. And uh, probably very shortly after this broadcast, he will be rolling on down to jail, um, probably in the ambulance because of his sensitive medical condition, but... Um, at long last, he will be behind bars. Yeah, sweet. Um, I'm going to say this really super short because I noticed last night on a certain TV channel I was watching, which normally uh, does not hesitate to criticize Nastas. It's not one of these uh, sycophantic type of shows that uh, apparently, I mean, Monica Makove said it in an article in the German newspaper FAZ that, uh, you know, the whole thing was fake, the suicide attempt was fake, I, um, she was the strongest uh, person of note, I guess, in Romania to actually go out and outright say it was fake, uh, a couple, uh, I know, Kamikaze, which is sort of like a satire magazine, sort of like Mad Magazine, maybe, in Romania, uh, they certainly called it was fake, but nobody of gravitas, a serious person, said it's fake. She came really close to it. She kind of walked it back a little bit yesterday. Um, I'll tell you right now, it's 1,000% fake. I mean, the whole thing. And I'm really not going to devote 30 minutes talking about this, but, you know, there's supposed to be the shot yesterday. Uh, Nastasi's son and his wife, uh, they gave an official statement to the police. And that statement to the police was released to the media with their consent. Uh, of course, it helps their father, but they basically had a, a bizarre story. Uh, the wife was basically saying, oh, uh, you know, they didn't take care of him like he deserved, okay, blah, 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 I'm not going to get into the details, but the son said, um, total BS, you know, that he heard a strange noise or a loud noise, which, of course, no one outside heard, even though he's firing, blam, blam, he's firing off guns, and uh, not only did human ears not hear it, but even, you know, cameras that were recording and rolling at the time didn't pick up any shots of any sounds of gunfire. Son supposedly hears a loud noise, runs into the uh, office or uh, where his father was, and his father's already on the ground bleeding from the neck. And uh, you know the police snapped the handcuffs on him, and he's bitching up a storm because oh they put handcuffs on him. Well, you know if we're gonna stick with the official story that Nastasi just tried to kill himself. You know, the guy just fired a gun inside of a house. Uh, the police officer is there to arrest a guy, and he's firing off guns. Of course you're going to arrest him! You don't want him to either grab another gun that nobody knows where it might be uh, and shoot it. He might shoot himself again. If he, you know, supposedly shooting himself, he might shoot himself again. Two, he might have another gun in his pocket somewhere. You don't know about it, and he might shoot that gun. Or three, he might be trying to shoot the police. So, yeah! Guy in a house who is going to jail fires off a gun and they're going to uh, throw the handcuffs on. Oh, they were so mean to my father. But the hilarious part was, um, you know, supposedly Nastasi's on the ground. He's got the handcuffs on. He's bleeding and they're waiting for the ambulance guys to get there. And another police officer shows up and, and he says, good thing he didn't bite you. 
Yeah, I was looking at Stasi with, you know, mad dog. Uh, the word shoot and bite in Romanian uh, rhyme, Moshkat and Impushkat, so uh, if he really did hear that, he probably would say, good thing he didn't shoot you. I don't know why anybody would think a 60-year-old man would be biting a police officer, but it's kind of, I kind of had this image in my mind, it's kind of funny, he's like, rah, rah, you're never taking me to jail, coppers, he's trying to, you know, bite these bastards, but, you know. Interesting uh, development, besides Nasase uh, going to be going to jail here since I guess his terrible injuries aren't that bad because yesterday, uh, you know, his lawyers and doctors were saying that, oh, he's so delicate, he can't be moved, he's got to stay in the hospital, you know, BS. So, you know, an ambulance or a helicopter, you know, some kind of, you know, transport could not keep him alive between the hospital in Bucharest and the hospital in Rahova, but that was what they were saying yesterday. And we're going to take it all the way to the European Court of Human Rights and blah, 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 you know, you know, doing anything they can do to get this guy to jail. Now, he still hasn't been moved as of right this minute. Um, I just saw the reports that the court in Bucharest, which had to, you know, they had to take everything to court. I mean, they're, they're already going to take the police to court. Uh, the lawyers of Nassad are going to take the police to court because they, you know, no, oh, you didn't treat my client with proper respect. So, a court of Bucharest ruled that he can be moved. Hopefully, he'll be moved. And honestly, I mean, I cannot wait for this guy just to get behind bars. They can do whatever they want to after he's behind bars. Uh, they can, you know, feed him three quarters meals of lobster or, um, you know, have a thousand doctors on hand, you know, fluffing his pillow or whatever they want to do. I don't really care. I just want to see the guy locked up in a proper prison, not, you know, ensconced in his little plastic surgery clinic with his buddies, but in a real prison. I want to see him go in the door, chick, chick, you're behind bars, adios, see you in eight months. Um, related to that case, there's two doctors, um, Sherban Bradistianu, which is probably a hard name to say if you're not Romanian, and uh, Ion Laskar. Uh, I mentioned this on my blog because I, I, I and I, I, quite frankly, the fact that I caught it was not that weird, uh, it wasn't mysterious or difficult to find out, but I, I gotta tell you today, I was actually pretty depressed and then I read this report and I, I started getting a little, there's like a little glimmer of hope inside of me that things in Romania might actually be working out because these two doctors, uh, Brujistiano and Laskar, they're both uh, red team loyalists. They're party loyalists. And uh, one of them, Brodistiano, used to be a senator, a politician for the PSD. He's also a doctor. He was also a doctor back then. He had to resign because he was brought up on corruption charges. Um, I guess in English you'd say he had a mistrial. There was a technical problem with the, the procedure. And so he's um, facing the trial again, or still ongoing because it had to be done from the beginning. The other guy, Las Carreras, is already an honorary member of the Ponte government. These two doctors are the ones who, you know, Nassasi went to go see when he got shot. And these guys are, you know, could be more loyal party members. Well, today, what cheered me up was that the DNA, which uh, sounds a little funny in English because it sounds like, you know, the code inside your cells, but in DNA in Romanian, uh, DNA uh, means the anti-corruption uh, bureau, like the National Anti-Corruption Task Force, or whatever you want to translate it as. And they specifically are the ones who bring these corruption cases against high-profile people, such as Nastase. Um, they're not a court, uh, but they do bring up the charges and they do their investigations and they have a lot of latitude because uh, Romania set it up that way um, as part of the deal with uh, getting approved to be in the European Union. So the DNA, the anti-corruption people, actually uh, formally interviewed uh, these two doctors, Brajstiano and Laskar, on the Nastasi case. I couldn't believe it. And, you know, nothing's been filed. They're not in trouble or whatever, but they got officially, you know, they had to give a statement to the police, basically. And it's one of these kind of deals where there might be a, you know, a trial or a criminal case down the road. You know, Yahoo, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, finally things are kind of working the way they're supposed to be. 
Of course, uh, one of their buddies, who wasn't involved directly, but he's head of a you know medical association, he was like, this is outrageous, an infringement on the blah, blah, blah of my patient. Or, I mean, not my patient, a fellow doctor, how dare you involve yourself with your godlike powers to determine things. Well, you know, <laughs> doctors in Romania, uh, doctors in the world are respected because, of course, they help you when you're sick and they fix you when you get injured, but... You know, Romania's got a bad, bad corruption problem with doctors. Um, there was a totally unrelated doctor here in Cluj, worked down at the Children's Hospital, uh, got caught red-handed uh, taking a bribe from a family. You know, it was like 500 euros to do some surgery on the kid or whatever. So they caught him red-handed, they got a videotape or something, you know, like, couldn't argue with it. Bam, he gets busted by the, you know, local police. Next day, doop doop doop, he's back to work! And, uh, you know, people were a little bit shocked. And so they went down and talked to the, his boss, the medical director down at the hospital. And they said, dude, you know, that guy got arrested yesterday for, you know, taking a bribe. And he goes, well, uh, that may be so, but uh, we need a doctor. And, you know, there's no rule. It says once you get arrested for corruption or bribery that you, you know, you can't continue to go to work. So, that's how it is in Romania, and a lot of it has to do with practicality. Uh, doctors here are very uh, underpaid, especially compared to other countries, and bribery is how they supplement their income. So, two doctors in Romania taking a fall to cover up this bizarre BS story about Nastasi, you know, being shot or trying to commit suicide or whatever else, you know, that's normal. Because uh, I saw a guy yesterday who was talking about it, and he said, Imagine this. Imagine that um, the whole thing was set up. Well, you get to the hospital, and eventually you know somebody outside your little close circle is going to be inspecting the situation. They're going to look for the wounds. Yeah, well, you know, aren't they going to find out that you know there's no gunshot wound on the guy if it was fake? And then it's, oh, wait a second. It's a plastic surgery clinic. You know, where they... Are professionals at changing your appearance and making things look like other things and oh I can move my hairline I can move my nose I can change the shape of my face I can get fake boobs whatever well you think they can't fake like a little gunshot exit wound that's healing so uh, who knows if there'll ever be full-on proof that Nastasia did all this but it was cool to see that the two doctors who were helping them are at least being investigated officially um, what else went on? Oh, today, uh, very important, uh, 187 to 56 was the vote in the parliament, 186, 187 for, 56 against, and they changed the, the law, or they passed the law, I should say, uh, it will be, uh, oh, look who came to visit, it's my little cat, <laughs> right in the middle of the show, uh, what can you do, folks, we're, <laughs> still working on a few things, but the past this rule uh, that how to get rid of a president of Romania. See, the deal in Romania is uh, the parliament with a simple majority um, can pass a, basically a, a motion that's it's called uh, suspension. They suspend the president. But then by law, it has to go to a public referendum and the public votes on it. Now, the old rule was that um, the majority of registered eligible voters, in other words, 50% of the electorate, has to vote for suspension, and then uh, the president is removed from office. The new rule is that only 50% of people who show up to vote have to pass, uh, have to vote for uh, removal, and the president will be removed. So in other words, um, they've already been talking about it. The, Red Team, Yellow Team Alliance already has the votes necessary to pass the motion in the Parliament to suspend the President. Technically, it's supposed to be for grave infraction of the law. Of course, they're not going to wait for that, because it's just gonna be way too <laughs> smart for that. He's not going to like, oh yeah, I was, uh, you know, you know, hunting big horned elk down at the river with unlicensed gun. No, of course not. He's not going to do anything stupid. Oh, this heroin? No, oh, I thought it was legal, dude. No, man. No, of course not. They're just going to find some BS excuse. 
passed a motion to suspend the president like they already did in 2007. It's already been done before. And then there can be another election, a uh, referendum, excuse me, uh, which means a nationwide vote. And I'm going to waste a ton of money and all these campaigns and blah, 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 no, blah, blah, yes. And then the people got to vote on it. Now, according to the new rule, of course, um, you know, only 50% of the people who show up to vote uh, have to be in favor of it, which means that apathetic people, which is there's plenty in Romania, if they stay home, maybe they don't really care, or maybe they uh, actually like Pesescu, but if they don't show up and vote no, uh, it won't happen. Of course, other people are angry, uh, they're going to show up and vote. So it probably be easier to suspend, uh, excuse me, remove the president from office, and then of course it would be a nationwide election. So, the problem, of course, with this new you know, parliamentary measure is that, um, you know, it's, in, it's a change of the Constitution, essentially, of how things work. And so, uh, the opposition party, the Orange Team, is going to take it to the Constitutional Court and get it ruled on and see whether it's even, even legal to change the way you, to, you know, remove a president from office. So, more BS crap going on in Bucharest. Speaking of which, uh, Constitutional Court, uh, Thursday is the big European Union summit, uh, council summit, where all the heads of state meet, and you know, they've already been talking about what they're going to talk about, euro crisis and this and this stuff, and still not decided, you know, Basset, I'll move my head, Basescu versus Ponta, because who's going to go? Is it going to be the prime minister or is it going to be the president? Still hasn't been decided. Uh, apparently, and this is kind of, you know, this ultimate example of what remains all about on Wednesday, the day before uh, the Constitutional Court. There's a special court in Romania. It's a little bit different than the American justice system or British or anywhere else. There's a special court. It's called the Constitutional Court. And they only rule on matters of... They're like the Supreme Court, but they only... You know, they're the highest court when it comes to this particular... Uh, jurisdiction, but they only cat cat. That's word of God. <laughs> they only rule on issues of which laws or procedures are constitutional, which ones aren't. So they're waiting until Wednesday, the day before, to make their decision. I guess a uh, lawyer is somewhere frantically, you know, preparing their cases so they can go in front of these judges. It's a bench, you know, it's not just one judge, it's a, several judges. And, uh, you know, they got one freaking day to decide who's going to take a plane trip to Brussels and represent the country. Kind of a big deal. And the fact that they're putting it off until the last minute when this issue's been going on for over a month now, and they certainly... Uh, could have weighed in or, you know, got this case involved. There's plenty of people interested in this case. So there's, you know, Orange Team could put a complaint on there or Red Team Parliament could, you know, just a, it's, somebody could have easily gotten the process rolling if that was the way they wanted to do it. Instead, in Romania, there's fighting, arguing, uh, insults, uh, terrible, mean things being said, juvenile things, and it's an incredibly serious issue. You know, who represents Romania on a the most important meeting that they ever have? Because, of course, we're, they're in the European Union, and this is the head of European Union countries all meeting together. And it certainly affects every single person who lives in Romania, and yet they're dilly-dallying around to the last minute. So, that's the way it goes in Romania, right? What else is going on? Oh, uh, speaking of dilly-dallying around, uh, Jan Rus, who is the interior minister in Romania, he's an old communist bastard. Uh, he was deeply involved in the Nastasic case because, according to his statements to the press, several things have been messed up, on, and I really don't want to focus on this too much. Oh, did we find one bullet casing, or did we find two or three, and was it nine miller, millimeter, was it 38? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I talked to Nastasi four or five hours before, and he was suicidal, so I sent an ambulance crew on standby, just in case, and yet, of course, you know, what do you know, he needed an ambulance crew, and luckily they were right there, and oh, it's a private ambulance company, it's not the public health ambulance, oh, blah, 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 well, he is the interior minister, 
And uh, he gave a statement today to the press that, unrelated to Nassau State, he said Romania is ready to be included in the Schengen Zone. And Romania spent a billion, not a million, billion euros securing their borders. They're ready for Schengen. Now, Schengen, uh, if you're not ultra uh, familiar with Schengen, Schengen is uh, an internal um, agreement between several countries in Europe, mostly the EU countries, but I believe uh, there might be a few that or in the EU that aren't part of Schengen and a few that aren't part of the EU that are part of Schengen. But essentially it means that there's no more border control. If I'm in France, I drive a car, take a train, fly a plane to Germany, I'm not, I'm not really crossing a border. There's no passport control. There's no uh, stopping me at the border. There's no, uh, you know, checking to make sure I'm not importing things I'm not supposed to be importing. It's essentially wide open borders. And Romania, although it's in the EU, is not in the Schengen, which means that when you leave Romania to go to any other country, uh, you have to go through passport control and make sure you get a visa if you need it, and you know they can inspect your cargo and all this kind of stuff. Hungary, I believe, is in the Schengen, which is when you get to the border of Hungary, you always got to go through that. So what Romania is saying, and what Rus is saying here, is that you know Romania can secure its borders so that bad things don't get in from other countries like Moldova and Ukraine and Serbia which are not in the Schengen zone and that Romania is ready to you know have its people flow over the borders with no control well are the borders secure uh, they're secure in the sense that you know bands of you know random smugglers aren't you know <laughs> sneaking through uh, that part is true and I'm sure that uh, anybody that the Romanian border police want to keep out are pretty much kept out. Problem is that there's a lot of corruption and a lot of scandals going on with that. And, you know, you can have spent 2 billion euros, you can spend 20 billion euros. The guy at the border is going, you know, going through, buddy. You know, it's all a complete waste of time. It's sort of like America. They have maximum security prisons, and yet people are still importing drugs. Well, how can you import drugs into a maximum security prison? Well, because the guards look the other way. you got to have a guy who looks the other way. Well, remain that's the way it works. And uh, I read a very long and tragic uh, piece from a woman who used to run one of the, uh, it's called the Customs Agency of the VAMA in Romania. She was running the customs uh, post in a certain city in Romania. And she was talking about just how much, you know, these people were paid the bare, bare minimum wage. And so they're easily tempted to take a bribe to look the other way. And yet the government wastes tons of money. Like she was talking about, like, okay, imagine you have your, your border agents pay a minimum wage. And yet at the same time, the building that they're working in is not owned by the government, but leased. To, uh, it's a building owned by a private individual, and the government's paying, you know, 40,000 euros a month to this guy to rent out his property, lease out his property. So there's all that money going to that guy, and everybody knows it, and yet there's no money for the agents. Well, why is all that money going uh, to the local guy? Oh, well, it turns out he's a big, you know, supporter of the local political party. So blah, 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 you know, that's how it works in Romania. So... If I was a government uh, minister in Romania, or outside of Romania, and I was trying to vote on whether Romania should be in the Ding Dong of Schengen Zone or not, I'd vote no. They are not ready, not even close. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I mean, I, w I would really like it if they were in the Schengen Zone. Uh, there's a lot of very ordinary, good people in Romania who, you know, be good for them to travel, good for them to go to work. Don't get stopped at the border, be good for export. A lot of Romanian companies, you know, boom, boom, could be shipping stuff all over the place. Blah, blah, blah. But Romania's got problems, and I don't think it's ready. Speaking of uh, problems, or excuse me, not problems, depends on your opinion, I guess. I noticed that IMF, International Monetary Fund, was like, oh, Romania, you're doing such a great job. We have this big press release today or yesterday talking about how Romania's doing so fabulous. I'm not going to get into the details here. 
essentially the deal is that I made this pan them back. <laughs> Uh, it's not much more than that. Uh, the economy, of course, is being screwed up, and a lot of bad things are going on. And uh, I'm not going to get into too many details at the moment. But I message, oh, bravo, oh, bravo. You're one of our people who are paying us back. Why? Because Greece not paying them back. Other countries not paying them back. Uh, I know another country. I forget the name right now because I'm, I'm tired. But they just told Diamond to take a hike. So Romania is still our loyal customer. Yay! Good for you. You get a free toaster. So Dina Posto, the former mayor of Cluj, who was convicted of taking bribes, you know, I basically saw him ask for a bribe right in front of me. Uh, they let him out of jail yesterday because um, he's not, uh, he hasn't finished serving a sentence, but he's under basically, you know, they call, I guess you call it parole. You know, she's on parole. Well, whoop de whoop, how much time did he serve in jail? Three months? Oh, it drives me nuts. And uh, what I've been seeing, as crooked as he is, the used to be the vice mayor, or the uh, Cluj just got a mayor, the pretty much, and then the two or three vice mayors who uh, share the uh, responsibilities. Apostle got arrested for being uh, corrupt, sentenced to, went to jail, and what I've been seeing was the interim mayor. And this guy uh, caught red-handed driving a car from a company that he signed a contract with, a city contract. Oh, blah, 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 how dare you, sir? And uh, now he's retired from politics because the bulk, you know, won his seat back. And Radha Mousin is basically out of a job. So he's like, oh, what should I do with my wisdom that I've gained? The guy's like, I don't know, 34 is a young guy. Well, he's going to work for a law firm. He's a lawyer. Now, I'm sure he had the schooling to be a lawyer, but the guy is crooked. He got caught red-handed, uh, basically driving a bribery car. I don't know how you say it. He, he, in his position as the vice mayor of Cluj, he signed a contract with a, a big company that cleans the streets. And next thing you know, he's driving a luxury car that's owned by this company. They didn't give it to him, they just let him drive it around. And he got, got caught on videotape. A guy, a local citizen, honest person, tried to, you know, file a complaint against him. And he was like, oh, how dare you? Well, I'm the vice mayor of Cluj, sir. Didn't apologize, didn't care. Um, I guess technically it's not illegal, so, you know, nothing happened. And now he's going to be a liar. So, what does that mean? Well, it means that in a year or six months or two years or five years one day you're going to be in a court case and here's a little Radu Musin the lawyer and oh he used to be the interim mayor of Cluj he used to be the vice mayor of Cluj he was the head of the blah 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 political party orange team you think that guy's got connections of course he does so you look at the judge and the judge goes I know that guy I don't know you you're guilty I can tell man but we're going to finish this on some good news, because uh, I hate being depressed all the time. Um, I noticed that on Friday, amidst all the other kooky things going on here, they opened a brand new, inaugurated, which means it's working, it's not uh, a project, it's actually working, 70 megawatt wind farm in Tocha! Yay! So, alright, so what that means is that... Sustainable energy being created and operational here in Romania. So that is fantastic news. And uh, I would like to see about 100 more of these things come up uh, and replace all of the horrible ways Romania uses, makes electricity and energy today. But step by step, baby steps. Remember what uh, we learned from What About Bob? Baby steps. And so it is a baby step in the right direction. So I'm very happy about that. But now, time to wrap up the show, so I will see you later. Bye.